there is something about sitting down. There is something spiritual about that posture. I'm not talking about the physical posture of sitting. I'm talking about planning. A planless life is a failed life. What goals do you have? What spiritual goals do you have? What financial goals do you have? Because to be planless is to live a defeated and impoverished life. I see young men, young women who live their lives planlessly because when you fail to plan, you are planned to fail. So anytime a man must stretch for a rich, such an individual must plan. He must have goals. Goals is, what it simply means is to put your life on a schedule. To schedule your life. Because any life that has a goal is a life that is not lived riotously. It's not possible to live prudently without goals. It's not possible to live well without goals. It's not possible to be efficient without goals. It's not possible to be effective without goals. A lot of destinies have had sudden mortalities as a result of their goalless nature. Their inability to set goals. People live aimlessly, wander directionlessly as a result of a goalless life. To have goals is to be successful, to set goals. When a man set goals, he has achieved a quarter of his destiny. You know, there is a discovery, there is a deploy, there is a discovery, there is a development, there is a deployment. There is another D4 discipleship. When you turn what you have learned into a model, the first one is discover your vision. The second one is you develop it. There was a guy in the scripture. He was, he was not regarded as a member of his family. Because of that, they thrust him out. But he had a skill. He was an archer and a warrior. Was shooting arrows. So what he did when he got into the desert where they chased him to, what did he start doing? He started rehearsing. And then a need called. They said, these people have come up against us in war. And we are not able to fight this war ourselves. They went and fetched him. He said, make a deal with me if I lead you to this wall and you win and conquer that I become your king. They said, no problem. So as a result of his competencies, he led them to the war and they won and he became a king over them. So the first is you have to have a vision, then you have to develop it. In this point of development is where the challenge is. A couple of us live every of our lives to the grace of God. Powerful. In fact, my life is round about God's grace. But I want you to know that the grace of God is an empowerment to walk. The grace of God is supposed to be a strength, an energy to walk. Paul was writing in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. He said, I am what I am today by the grace of God. He said, but he tattoo I walk. He tattoo I walk. Because the grace that was given to me was not in vain. I am what I am. Pull it up. By the grace of God. He said, but his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored. Not just walking. He labored. There was a laborious walk. I labor. So we have a lot of people who leave everything to God. They don't have dreams. They are not in pursuit of anything. And because they are not in pursuit of anything, they can't accomplish anything. And when they now see people who have accomplished something, they have entitlement mentality. 
They believe you should be helping us. You have a sister who is married and you are a man. This my sister is rich and she doesn't even want to help anyone. Entitlement mentality. Who told you that someone to help you is your entitlement? Somebody is saying, but I'm not feeling entitled. Once you get angry because someone has a thing and has refused to give it to you, it is entitlement. Isaiah chapter 54 verse number 1. Isaiah 54 verse number 1. Sing, O barren. It's not just talking about barren in terms of those who have not given birth to children. You who have not delivered. You who have not given birth. Not just to give him birth in terms of womb. Produce a goal. Produce a vision. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married women. Now listen, listen. Here in one part is talking about a woman. But more so, this particular scripture speaks about someone who has not produced. Now if you read through the scriptures, I discover that any time God will teach his children wealth. He will send them to Egypt. If you read the beginning of Genesis, what God's children were busy doing was raising altars. That's powerful. You know, that's the essential and the most quintessential of the things a man can do. They were raising altars. But the hidden we are building cities. Watch it. Every city built was built by the hidden. This place is telling us that there is a misplaced vision. Look at this. A woman who is married doesn't have. Then someone who is not married have, has many children. You have the spirit of God. You are fruitless. And you are now begging money from those who don't have the spirit. Do you know why? You have the wine, but you don't have the wine skin. But they have the wine skin, but they don't have the wine. Get me a bottle of water. Okay. Okay, you went and opened it. Close it. This water, what are you buying? What are you buying? But to buy this water, for this water to be preserved, what preserves the water? This is the wine skin. This wine skin is systems. Can I shock you? Can I shock you? If I want you to drink this water now, how much of it can you drink? Father, I bless this water in the name of Jesus. Who wants to take some? Okay. Show me your hand. I believe your hand is clean. Anyone you can drink, drink. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Did he take half of it? Did he take half of it? Why? Why? No one skin. This is what happens to destinies. People don't reach to the maximum of the fulfillment of their dreams because they have not built a system around their dreams. I give you an instance. It's like someone who has a business and you don't, you don't take what is called inventory. No taking of stock. You are doing it by the grace of God. So what the word does is that 
They don't even have the wine. They have the wine skin. And as a result of this wine skin, you see now, in less than one minute, everything is wasted. But this one is still remaining. Because this guy is supposed to be the preserver of this one. So do you know what we do? We pray and we fast. God releases the wine. But we also need to believe God and have a well detailed structured life to put a wine skin around the wine. If not, if this guy is not here, the wine will be wasted. I've studied, there are ministers who have come and gone mighty prophets and I studied their lives one after the other and I discovered that those who could not touch the edge of eternity mighty people and when you are structureless you cannot journey far not one stop I know also people who have touched money so much money they have nothing to show for it Goals will help you fine-tune your life. One of the things goals does is that it helps you to curb excesses. For instance, as I'm here now, excuse me, if you give me 500 million, it will stay up to three months. Are you shocked? I say it will stay up to what? Why I say three months is so that you don't start thinking if something is okay with me. It won't stay more than one week. Somebody will say, what is he using it to do? The vision is there. The vision is there. If you give it to me, I will sleep, wake up and pray. I'm not thinking what to do with it. It's already there. Somebody is, you now want to, want, you want to know what I will use it and do. You think it's this building. No, we are done with this building now. A campground. Campground. 100 plots and above. Campground. Depending on the location, it might not be enough. Once you've gotten it, you perimeter it. Put fence. And I will come back again. I tell you, that 500 million, I won't, I won't change a car. You didn't hear what I said? I won't change any car I have in my house. There are three kinds of goals. Short-term goal, mid-term goal, long-term goal. Short-term goal is from a day to maybe six months. One year, mid-term goal from one to three years. Long-term goal from three years and maybe 50 years. But don't have much of a long-term goal because the short-term goal is supposed to feed the mid-term goal. The mid-term goal is supposed to feed the long-term goal. What, look at what it means. What it means is that what you are doing in the short-term is supposed to facilitate the dreams of the mid-term. What you are doing in the short-term and the mid-term, they are supposed to facilitate the dreams of the long-term. For instance, a couple of you are doing in the in the now, what they should do in the next 10 years. So you are 19 years, you're already falling in love. 19 years. You're already sneaking out. There are some things we will say, and then some people will think we are talking about us so much. The moment I decided to have anything to do with a lady in my life, I'd made up my mind to marry. When I finally got a car, I think it was in my second or third year, I never carried any lady alone in that car until I graduated. Not in the front, in the car. A couple of those things we did helped us. Because we came to school 
and we saw a lot of people live a very careless life. One of the things vision will help you do is to save you from living anyhow. When you live anyhow, you will end anyhow. So what okay you who have not labored with child for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married women says the Lord. Verse number two it says enlarge the place of your tent. This is talking about the faculty of your reasoning. You see and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Strengthen your stakes. He said, for you shall expand to the right and to the left. Every expansion begins from the mind. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. He says, do not fear for you. I will do this. Draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. So God will always respond to what we have the capabilities to do. God will always respond. So we see from this scripture and we discovered it is not God doing his own first. We have a role to play. You have a duty to perform. Now I say, what does setting up goals does in our lives? Number one, goals help fulfill vision. So clear-cut vision facilitates the fulfillment of goals. When the vision is clear, you will now know what and what to do to get there. Number two, goals are faith forecasters. Goals are faith forecasters. Goals. When you have goals, you have forecasted faith. What does that mean? Your goal is to, by the end of the year, to have 5 million. By setting that goals, you have activated faith. The problem is not in vision discovery. The problem is in vision pursuit. Action. Action. Because that's where the real... Please take it down a little. That's where the real assignment is. Play it in the background. That's where the real assignment is. Now, of course, he already has a vision. There is a way not to live. And he looks coordinated. Then another question I will have to ask him, but it will not be with microphone, <laughs> is what are you doing now to achieve that? You know, what you just shared with me is not what one million can do. It's not what five million can do. So if you have five million and wear chain with it, it has defeated. You see a man that has three different into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In different places in Enugu. Go to that place by 7. 7 30. The man is there. Opening his shop. It might be this. Maybe it's workers opening the shop. It might not be 7. But before it is 9 10, the man is there. He sits down from that 10 till evening. He does his breakfast there most of the times, does his lunch there. And then leaves out for the dinner. A man who has over 700 million. You see another person who has not made up to 80,000 in life. He has 3,000. He's already online with data. Chatting morning to your night. With someone. Before you know it, they go and start doing Yahoo. Can't you see the Yahoo guys? They are visionless. They get 18 million, they buy Benz of 14 million. 
Instead of living in their own house, they move into a hotel. Do you know why? Do you know why? The money didn't come from a processed man. <laughs> Someone who is processed. <laughs> The guy didn't know you would get the money and he didn't money. work for it. Yeah. You will tell me you worked for it. He didn't know. All of a sudden, it falls into his hand. And then he believes. When I see how men spend, I can predict how they got it. Go back. Sir. Okay, because of the want of time. Goals define action. That's what I said. What are the qualities of goals? If you must set goals, what are the qualities of goals? Number one, it must be it must be tangible, it must be realistic, not abstract. Not abstract. Like what is your goal? You know, my goal now is to uh, fence my village. And they are telling us I have a big goal. How can your goal be to fence your village? It must be realistic. It must be something within the jurisdiction of realism. See what this young man said. Very clear. If you watch his life, you already know where he wants to invest. Education. He wants to use education as a tool for community transformation. Myself is not education. We have the same vision, but we have different tools to fulfilling the vision. My own is to raise many godly men. So now, if you come to blame me, saying that this man has trained a lot of people in school and I'm not training people, you are making mistakes. Some people are saying, why are pastors not opening businesses for people? Pastors are not raised to open businesses for people. Jesus never opened one business for any man. He said, follow me, I will make you disciples. He never raised business people. So if you see me give you money to open business, it is a surplus to the requirements of my vision. Yes. What I was raised to do is to raise sons amongst nations with spiritual competencies. But we have a couple of other things, them rights of visions. To us accomplish. So his own tool is education. My own tool is spiritual stature. He believed that people can be empowered economically when they are trained. I have a lot of people under my scholarship, you must understand that they are over 25. 25 is to be humble. Paying in our school and in different other schools. To all levels. So, we are doing that. But my passion, <laughs> my passion is not so much of education. I have passion, but that's not my primary passion. It's not my obvious passion. You won't wake me up in the morning and I will, you will tell me, what do we do and this society will be better? And I will call education first. Mm -mm. Because the passion of every man, the compassion a man has, is the passion that drives, is the compass that drives his passion. So your goal must be realistic. Number two, it must be precise. It must be communicable. Not fuzzy ideas. It must be precise. See what he did. What is your vision? He was precise. It's precise. They ask you, what is your vision in life? <laughs> Nga Malaysia. You see Malaysia by China. You should say China. By India. It's good to talk. Then when the land is in India, it is not communicable because every vision and goal must be targeted at every vision, sorry, must be targeted at B 
blessing others. Number three, it must be achievable. Oh man of God, what is your vision? Somebody was saying that he has a, a pastor. He has a vision to, that's the only vision he has in life. That he will sand fill Babbage and build on it. Build a church. That Babbage will be a church. See, every morning he goes to Babbage and he's praying. Babbage, I will sand fill you. And you will be my, my, my church. Now the question is, government will allow you to feel Babbage? The dreams you have, is it achievable? What is your dream in life? I want to build 500 million capacity church. Somebody was telling me. He said he wants to build a church that will seat 500 million people. I said, I love your vision. Are you aware Nigeria is not up to 250 million people? Are you aware Nugu State is 4 point something million people? He's a man of God. When the time comes, immediately the time comes, the provision will come. And I'm wondering if you are giving the way of Enugu State to build, like you put one pillar in Okonan, one pillar in Nkano, one pillar in Udi, you put pillar like that and roof the whole Enugu state. Can it contain 500 million people? It is not achievable. You must have a dream, a vision, a goal that is achievable. That can be achieved. Some people think that when they sound out of this world, out of this world, they sound to have big dreams. It must be achievable. Number four, it must be measurable. It must be measurable. Number five, it must be definitive. When we talk about definitive, every goal must have in itself action points, things you need to do. To be able to realize them. You know, when you, when you look at me, back, for instance, somebody was telling me, he said, I, I, I shouldn't preach about business. That he stands a better chance to preach business than myself. I said, okay, that's great. I said, why? He said, because he has done business in the past. But the thing is that it is not working. It wasn't working. He closed it down. So he knows the experience of business more than me. Now, I want you to know that you will always look like your teacher. So someone who did business and never succeeded in it, is now telling someone who is doing a business, do you know I have built two separate brands? Census is a brand. As we are here, the same Bible reading we are reading here, people are reading it in Oka, people are reading it in Portacot. People are, two persons are, two branches are reading it in Lagos. People are reading it in over 16 branches in Enugu State. Started a brand, Wisdom Crest Academy, you will say, okay, church is church. A brand, Wisdom Crest Academy, and in four years, we are close to 1,000 students. Four years. And you think it's a joke. You think it's just put your head in between your leg and pray for 10 hours every day. No. The mind must be engaged. Mental work. Mental work. Mental. School is one of the most terrible things to run. One of the most terrible. Because this has to do with someone giving you his or her child. Both crazy people and normal people. People will come to the school and they will tell you they will be screaming on top of their voice that their child came back sad. The face of the child is frowned. And he knows 
that the child started frowning from school. Why didn't you people make the child to be happy before the child came back? And you'll be explaining the person will want to tear down the school. You will call a parent and tell a parent, your child doesn't have appetite. Look for. Why did I bring the child to school? Look for the child to have appetite. You people should give the child appetite. Yes, we built brands. And we are building brands. It has not even started. You think we built here through prayer alone. Immediately we laid the foundation. I started going for trainings. Because any man that has not been trained cannot trend. Now I have a vision. And that vision is in the next two to three years. To start rejecting people in the secondary school. Not in terms of a crowd. It has to be tougher to the point that people from outside this city will want to school them. So what is the tool I want to use? Sciences. And that's my competencies. Chemistry. Physics. Mathematics. We will do other things, but these ones. So how do we go about it? You assemble a team. You must build state-of-the-art equipment that will be unequaled. And to do that, we have started. It's a journey. When we wanted to do lab, I said to people, let me see your lab. I discovered that 95% of schools don't have lab. It is when they want to approve the school that we chase children out of one classroom and then equip the lab. After that, every other thing gets into the box. If they want to do chemistry, they will look for some children and then take them out of the class, put in the titration bottles and all of that. And when schools start increasing, they can turn one of their classrooms or one of their labs into a classroom. So what did we do? We dedicated about three places. Mighty places for lab, laboratories. And it's not even possible for me to convert it again because we do gassing from under. Our gas went from under. Yes, for the Bonson Bonners, all these experiments. Our gas went from under. You can't see it. And it's also for the security of the children. It took us more money than we are seeing tomorrow. And we have now started bringing in equipment. Now listen. Listen very critically. Any man that does not want to learn, does not want to grow. If you know people I brought here, I brought in one man, I gave 50,000 just to come and look at the lab, tell us what to do. Brought in another person. Not, he's not doing anything in the lab, just consulting. Look at this place, what do you think we should do? Look at this place, what do you think we should do? And I brought about four persons before I built the lab. Then to equip the lab, I already have started sending him. I say, go and bring someone. Look for someone who does the highest of the lab equipment. Bring him to see what we are doing. And then there are two other persons I'm bringing. Come and watch what we are doing. Give us the equipment that is needed. Because in that expertise, you have to step aside for those who are experts to advise you. So while I was in Abuja, you already met with someone. And I've already met with someone. So this week, what we are trying to do now is to bring in people who will watch the lab and tell us. And then documentations will take place. And then I will take all these things they did and study it into one book. 
and then come out with a model before we can call for Wayek. Because that's where we are. Senior Wayek. So this person said, you've never done a business. I, I didn't want him to feel bad. He said, is it because I did business and it wasn't working? For the fact he did business and it wasn't working, he shouldn't speak where business people speak. You will always look like your teacher. Someone advising you 17 keys to making money has not made one million in his life. Someone giving you ideas have never. There is no idea that has worked. How can a pastor who has pastored for 25 years with eight members be telling me how to retain members? He's teaching me how to retain members. If I want to list him, I must list him to someone who has done twice what I'm trying to do once. I, I didn't say don't learn from everyone. <laughs> because there are three levels of relationship. When Bishop David Oedipo wanted to start university, he took a tour. He traveled to Harvard. Took a section. Traveled to Cambridge. Took a section. He stayed for weeks in each of these places. Watch what they do. That's why he has a lab that is the greatest in Africa. The greatest. His lab. The greatest. The highest in the entirety of Africa. The field where the Covenant University, where they do sports, can be used for Olympics. The people he brought that built it are people that built the Olympic stadiums. And you are wondering why Winners Chapel is where it is. It is not by accident. Listen, no. I got foes on if you don't have a knee, chick or what. Your life must be planned. Do you know that from the time they went to Canaan land, I think more than 18, more than 16 years, I can't. Light has not gone off once. <laughs> they produce their own electricity through damming. They have their own dam. Yes. Light has not gone off once. You didn't hear what I said. You don't use generator there. Don't you know that redemption camp? The, 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 they source their own electricity. It's not from your power grid. <laughs> I, how I wish they can just give Edo Yedeban that or Adepo, or any of these guys just one year to rule Nigeria. We are setting the standards, the church. lot of things we want to say here. So you start attacking her. All these winners chapel, they are the problem of Nigeria. How? How are they the problem of Nigeria? People that are employing over 32,000 people. How are they your problem? Don't criticize what you have not been able to do. First of all, start a business. Stay in Enugu and have one in Onido. Let us know how it goes. Stay in Enugu, open a branch in Lagos. Stay in Enugu, open a branch in Kaduna. Even your branch in Gariki. <laughs> you are just one minute trek from that place. You don't even go to shop. Do you know what we have done this week? alone. Wednesday I got an information I had to travel by emergency. So I flew into Lagos on Wednesday. Thursday I had an interview at the embassy. And then that same Thursday finished up what I was doing. Friday I had to 
I had a morning flight. It was delayed small. Came in here after to join the supernatural clinic. On Saturday, I attended the women and preached between the hour of, I think, one to about half past ten. And then got home, studied. We are here again. When I'm done, I'll be preaching for pleasant gatherings this evening. And it's like that. Now, there is no place in this thing for lazy people. No place in this thing for lazy people. Priorities must be set. Philippians 3, 13. Philippians 3, 13. He said, this one thing I do. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. You must set priorities. You must set priorities. Do you want to be great? Trim your priorities. What are your priorities? What are your prerogatives? Because priorities will help you sieve out the things that are not necessary. Not necessary. For instance, I got up this morning and I knew I have at least, at least 70 pages to write. Two days to do that. Maybe I could do that in a day. This morning I was studying for service early hours and I just cited my book. I have exams on Tuesday, my postgraduate, and I laughed. I said, how do I even read this? It's about 400 and something pages. And I've not opened it. But I will not fail it. So I just opened the book and marked 150 pages today, 200 pages tomorrow, and then 50 pages the day of the exam. And I was done. Do you know what it means? That place I marked, if I carry the book to read, there is no sleep. Even if it is the devil that sent the sleep, I will be doing like this and be reading it until I'm done. That's goals. And that 200 mark, I must. So it will help you to streamline what you are doing. I'm just giving you it because this is a teaching. I have to give you an example. What is your goal? Most of us or some of us are goalless. You don't even know what you want out of life. No shadowed life. Directionless. You wake up in the morning, you don't even know where will you be today? Once I've been in terror of manner, you know, so anytime somebody calls you, what are you doing? Nothing. Should I come? Should I come? That spare time you have, why not use it to learn something? Anything you learn today cannot be wasted tomorrow. Go and learn tailoring. Once, one day you will see you are preparing for an occasion. You won't have to call a tailor. You already know how to do something. You can sew your children's clothes. A young man was doing nothing. Practically nothing. And the mother even brought him to me. And then he was doing like this. The mother said, please pray for this boy. He stood like this. He stayed like this. Very, very proud. The mother said, please pray for my son. He's doing nothing. And then he's like this. And then he did like this. I said, now, nah, how old are you? He looked at me. He said, I'm 33. I said, you are 33. I said, what do you want to do? He said, why is this woman disturbing herself? I said, should I tell you the truth? He said, yes. I said, you are lucky. I said, you are very lucky to have a woman like this. He said, no, 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 let him not, let her not feed me. It's because I'm still living in her house. I said, you are a fool. A compound complex fool. This time he looked at me. I said, at 33. I said, I built my own first personal house in 2015. Seven years ago. Seven years ago. I said, the first house I built was in 2008. That's about some 14 years ago. I was 22 when I built it. I said I started giving my father money at the age of 18. 
17, 18, I was already saying, it's okay. I take care of what we are going to eat. I said, at 33, you've not graduated. I said to him, I became a graduate at 22. By 22, I was gone from school. I said, by 26, I was already married. By 27, somebody was already calling me a daddy. And at 33, I already have three children. I said I left my father's house in 2007. Meanwhile, in 2007, I moved them out of Obiago, moved them to where they are. And in 2007, I left that place for them to start living alone. I said, and I didn't start living alone with one cover. I said to the woman, you have raised a monster. She's now begging you. I said, what she needs is not prayer. I said, you are lucky you are living in a house. Come live with me for one week. Just one week. Know how you raise your children. I'm wondering, with much arrogance, by this time he sat up where? I say, you are already lit to this thing. Idigo lit. Idigo lit. He can't even guy. Idigo lit to this thing. can have one level. I say, I got the, I got the equenka. He can eat tank man. He reaches a tank man. He worry your mom. And I say, you have the effrontery to be proud before a man who arrived a great destiny before 33. And then he sat up. He knew it wasn't church. We are talking again. I said, get out of this place. You want to help yourself? Go help yourself. I said, call me next person. He said, uh, uh, the man of God. And then he turned to the mother. And then he wanted to talk. I told the mother, shift. He said, he said, what do I do? I said, now we are talking. Better! Abraham woke up at 70 and achieved this thing. 33 is not late. I said, better. I said, better. I said, what can you do? He said, no, I've been expecting my friend who is abroad. Told me, kept telling me that. I said, no. I said, what can you do with your life? He said anything. He said, but this thing you said, I'm even thinking of when I get home, I will be in my mother's house again. I will call one of my friends. I said, now the journey has started. Go and stay in your friend's house. He said, how can you help me? I said, can you learn medicine work? He said, yes, sir. I can learn it. I said, meet me up tomorrow. It was on a Wednesday morning. Thursday morning, I heard that somebody was already waiting for me. He was already around. I said, great. So I take his hand. I called one of my sons. Who is an engineer? I said, please. I need a help. He said, what is the help? I said, please help me teach this boy how to lay block. He said, sir, is that the help you need? I have works. He said, if he's willing to learn. The guy said, are we starting now? He said, yes, I'm already working. The guy wanted to use what he was wearing to start the work. He said, no, but your cloth is so, so neat. He removed it and get, went big. And then removed his trousers and was on boxers. I saw the thing in him. I told him, go get one room and we pay for it. He's a messing now. Messing. He is not there yet, but he's not asking anybody for food. The next thing we discussed, he said he discovered that he can through this send himself to school. I said, you want to? He said, yes. I said, how do you go about it? I said, I will buy you the jam form. He said, no, sir. He said, what I want to do is open university. I said, go get the admission. Your first tuition, I will pay it. So in the next seven years, you will see a young man who started out. Not, listen, if there is a will, there will be a way. He now brings tight. He now takes to the mother. Takes things to the mother. The mother told me. She said, if you have done nothing, I don't care if my son has 10 billion, 100 billion. Of course, do you know why? You can only keep useless friends because your agenda is useless. When you are busy, there are people you can't keep around you. 
Young man doesn't have time. Last time it was, they went out, so out. He's no longer even around. He's no longer around. This was happening in 2020, I think 2020 or 2021. The guy is, he, he started, all of a sudden he started working with company and all of that. A very good looking guy. Very good looking guy. And then when he talks now, you will know human being is talking. Last time he told me he saved Susa a month of money. 130,000. That he wants to know whether to do this or to do this or to do this. I say, okay, what are the things you want to do? He had one plan. That the shop of the mother is shaking. Instead of taking money to the mother every day, he wants to give the mother the money. Or should I go get a little shop and be waiting for another money to come to keep it and put somebody there. I said the first idea is better. Give it to your mom. So that that money you used to take in there will now become savings for other projects. He has started talking like someone who has sense. Has anybody been blessed? Yes, sir. You can't be in this church and be useless. I will just use you and sow a seed. One that will say you, stand up. Or you go to fire baptism church. Somebody say here. He is not there yet to, but look for that young man in this space he's traveling. In the next 10 years, he will build cities. Because the only thing God needs to get you to do is to be serious with your life. There is nothing else he cannot do. Somebody say here. It pains me when I hear someone tell me, my children have not eaten for three days and a man is telling me that. Like a man is telling me, my children have not eaten for three days. Ma, a man. Eh? Listen to, no matter the force is fighting you, I know by knowing that you are a useless man. Yes. Very useless. How can your children not eat for three days? Excuse me. Like you didn't see block to carry. You didn't see concrete to pour. You didn't see barrel to push. It's not possible. It's not possible. No, I'm telling you if I were you, it can't be possible that my children walk up for three days. Somebody will say, uh, listen to me. Without doing anything, no. I lived in the mountain all my life. There are things we did though. There are things we did. There was a time I was operating from the mountain. My wife knows my schedule. Now, even then, she was in the prayer team. Most of the times I was living in the mountain. I was hawking granite and I was still going to the university. In my year one, I hawked granite. And I was going to the university. People, a lot of people will see me on campus. And then all of a sudden, we see me hawking granite. They will say, it cannot be him. I will tell them it is me. There must be a will to make impact. Stop giving excuses for failing. Rise up and take the responsibility. Can't you see responsibility? There are three eyes. There is no them. So, responsibility, the first eye is I am responsible for where I am today. Number two is I alone can change my situation. Number three is I must now arise and do something with my life. Three eyes. What you are, what you have girlfriends that are giving you money. You are calling yourself a, a big, a big G. You a disgrace. Like you, what you do is to keep getting ladies. And because you feel you are good looking and talk well, you now be telling them, hello babes, Ojen 2K, the girl will give you. Ojen 5K, the girl will give you. And you are even sitting down, nodding your head. <laughs> Just knock that your Agama lizard head. Go and do something with your life, my friend. Any moment from now, you start producing children. Don't bring into this world children you can't train. Both train them financially and their responsibility. It won't be difficult to train any of my children because I will show them my, if they follow my path, they cannot fail. They follow my path. 
They can, it, I'm not talking this because we arrived here. No. At the age of 12, if you met me, you will know I had a burden to lift my family out of poverty. At 12. At 12. I could remember several years ago. I was only a 14-year-old boy. That was the day this Daram they challenged me. I was coming down from the mountain early in the morning because I needed to hug granite. And then he was doing a cantation in front of his place. I ran back. Came back again. I said, he was still doing it. I said, how can I run back? Because I need to be there. If I am not there as early as 5.30, I cannot peel the granite. I cannot uh, put it in the waterproof. Mandi and a trim pan to carry after school. And I had to trek to school, National Grammar School. Nikki. So I came through that place. And the man, the man stopped me and said, can't you see what I'm doing? If you don't go back, I will kill you. I was still walking where I was walking. By past five, I won't forget that day. I was only a 14-year-old boy. He said, this small boy, what are you doing in this lonely place? That spirits, that this is the time of spirits. If you are not a spirit, why are you walking here? Then I told myself, I have to be a spirit. He took a matchet and then I, I, I disappeared. I ran, but I still had to run. So when I was going through Old Park, because it was, I was so annoyed how I was, how I ran from that man. Something would have, I said, I would have stopped. And then, and do my hand like this and the man will fall. So I started crying from Old Park, Lord, give me power. I cried until I came into my house. Give me power. And my father asked me why I was crying. Early in the morning, I was 14. Listen to me. Anyone that must be great must wake up early. You are already late. It's time to wake up. Rise to your feet wherever you are. My desire to be all for you is all I want. Oh. I want to make a special altar call. If you know as a young man, as a young woman, as a man, as a woman, you are not at your best. If you know you have been set back and you need God to help you to become a better version of yourself, leave your seat and come. It's a special altar call. Oh Lord, take me to that place where I have no will that is separate from my will. Oh Lord, take me to that place where I have no choice that is separate from your choice to be all for you is my desire to be lost in you is all I want to be lost in you is my desire. If you are a woman, you have a more powerful competency of producing wealth. Yes. I see a nation. I spoke this way because God, God asked me to raise leaders that will transform society. Leaders that will transform nations. You can be more. I know I spoke in such a way that you are crying, but I want to tell you you are not late yet. Abraham left his father's house at 75. He was a useless man till he was 75. But excuse me, in the fewest of the years, he became the father of all nations. Yes, you can be great, even though it seems like your life has been delayed. You can arrive destiny. You don't have to condemn yourself. You don't have to condemn yourself. Because anytime God steps in, he pays you the arrears of your lost years. Speak to him. Tell him, Lord, now. I have decided to make most of my life. Give me the grace. Give me all it takes. Something is going to happen here that the earth has not seen. 
something will happen here that the earth has not seen giant will rise from this mountain that the earth has not seen wherever you are listening to me from any part of the world there is an anointing that makes men Pray to him. Pray to him. Lord, I forbid barrenness. Lord, cause me now to be fruitful. On every side, you might be waiting for another prayer session. Wherever you are, this is the most important time. Lord, I forbid barrenness in my life. Cause me to be fruitful. Cause me to be fruitful. Cause me to be fruitful. Cause my destiny to be fruitful. Cause me to bear fruit. I cannot live aimless again. I cannot live anyhow again. I cannot live aimless again. Flames are here. Shana Rasina. Lebro Salabate Kadomosa. Zigadama Nagada Lagada Lagadosa. Shibra Gadama Nagada Lagada Lagadosa. Erebene gada ligada managada lagada lagadosa. Esha gada lagada gabra na managada lagada lagadosa. Eregada libra gada managada lagada lagadosa. Jigada managada lagada 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 lagadosa. Erendesa, erendesa. Shaba lakatosa. Embros kala prakata lagosa. Jigada managada lagadosa. Erokodo libra gada managada lagadosa. Jigada gada na managada lagadosa. Jigada managada lagada managada lagadosa. Jigada prakata managada lagada lagadosa. Jigada gabra gada managada lagadosa. Eros sapata lagadosa. Jigada gabra gada managada lagadosa. Eros kabra gada managada lagadosa. Jigada gabra gada managada lagadosa. Jigada gabra gada managada lagadosa. Japata. Eros kapala taza. Jambros kala gabra gada managada lagadosa. Eros gabra gada ligada managada lagadosa. Japata nagada lagadosa. Eros sapata. Esopolo. Eskombrosa. Setena. Something is happening here. Please pray, please pray, please pray. There is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. Please pray. Lord, I forbid barrenness. I can never be barren. My destiny can never be barren. Lord, I shall be fruitful. Cause me to be fruitful. Cause my destiny to bear fruit. Yes, pray now. Yes, pray now. Yes, pray now. Pray! 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 Something is happening. Nations are rising. Nations are rising. Nations are rising. Fruitful people are rising. Yes, great people. Yes, great people. Yes, great people. Yes, great and great people. Yes, pray! Jesus, you are here. Yahweh, you are here. El Elyon, you are here. Rabba Nagada Ligada Nagada Ligada Nagada Ligada Lagadus. Isha Nagada Ligada Ligada Nagada Ligada Lagada Lagadus. Shigada Managada Ligada Nagada Lagadus. Irava Nagada Ligada Ligada Nagada Ligada Nagada Lagadus. Irava Nagada Ligada Ligada Nagada Lagadus. Jana Maramba Landa Lagada Ligada Nagadus. Eromba Lomba Londo Lopo Ligada Nagada Lagadus. Araba Nagada Ligada Nagada Lagadus. Pray! 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 
In Jesus, the mightiest name we pray. All I see is people willing to touch their generation. People willing to serve their generation. People willing to help a people. There is something the Lord asked me to do. Get me oil, please. As I drop this oil on this altar, some people might be waiting for us to start praying. They don't know that something has started. There are some of you that have labored. But it seems like nothing is working. Don't worry. As I drop this oil on this altar, unusual grace is coming on you. That a man is not loud. Unusual grace is coming on you. 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 You will live here with unusual grace. As a man, as a woman, you will never be a borrower the rest of your life. You will never. Be a beggar the rest of your life. You will be a lender. You will be a lender. In the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord tell me that the season to honor your life has come. The season to honor your destiny has come. The season to take you by your hand and lift you so high has come. That a man is not loud. 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 That season has finally arrived. Let me hear a loud amen three times. Grace. 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 They are carrying burdens that are way higher than them. No. God will not reduce the burden, no. God will give you a bigger shoulder. Yes. You will even carry more. But if what we are doing was bringing a cover, God is opening streams of incomes for you. I'm not asking the Lord to take away the burdens from you. No, I'm asking God to give you the capacity to carry it and it will be as though you are carrying nothing. That a man is not loud. 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 Receive grace now. It's done. Go back to your seat. 